So, Francis, are you presenting together, by the way? Yes. Francis and Samita, please come and share your work in Indonesia. I first want to say that uh, young people nowadays have no respect for their elders. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's really shameful. <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah, I'm only going to speak very briefly, and I'm going to turn it over to, to Samita. But um, <clears throat> this um, project was supported through the Partner Driven Cooperation Program of, of CETA, and it's still in progress, so don't expect any final uh, results. But, of course, feedback is always welcome. It's a collaboration between SCI and um, KTH, uh, the group that's, that's led by Samita there, and also with the Indonesian... Um, Agency for Agricultural Research and Development. And um, really, um, the only thing I want to, to say is that the, the idea of the uh, project came out of the fact that Indonesia uh, you know, is facing um, uh, the classic energy environment development trilemma that other countries are dealing with in terms of energy security, uh, climate change, and agricultural um, uh, development or, or rural development. And so the idea for the project uh, came from the fact that um, they have been looking a lot at uh, biofuels now that they are no longer a, an oil exporter. They're actually importing oil at an accelerating rate. And so the idea was to, to look at uh, certain aspects of their, of their strategy and see how it, how it might be uh, improved and what aspects of it were significant. We looked particularly at the, at the bioethanol side. So um, I'm going to actually let um, Samita take over. And there's two reasons for that. One is that um, KTH and Samita, they're, they're leading this, this project. And also that um, SCI signed a, an MOU with KTH recently. And so um, this is a concrete example that we, we collaborate together and work together. Thanks. Thank you, Francis. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, my name is Samita Silveira, and I'm professor in energy systems planning at KTH. And I'm very happy for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'd like to start actually putting this in the context of the discussions that I heard earlier here today, uh, uh, of the work of uh, SCI being on science to policy. And uh, at KTH, we are uh, working on the idea of technology to development and science to policy to development and uh, technology to development. So I think that uh, uh, that passes through policy. So. Therefore, the cooperation between KTH and, and SEI is so timely because uh, I think we really have a contribution here to make in putting the technology uh, element uh, a, a little bit more stronger in that. Uh, as Francis was saying, this work actually also was very timely because it was a work of a transition that is happening also in relation to the work we are doing with Indonesia from the Swedish side. Uh, Indonesia no longer being uh, uh, simply an aid recipient, uh, but rather uh, a strategic partner now. And we see a lot of policy for actually designing this strategy work. And we were very well placed because we had been working on this project on bioenergy that it started very much bottom up, looking at the sugar uh, cane uh, ethanol potential. And now we are raising that up to work uh, on bioenergy at the national level, bioenergy in a more, much more strategic way uh, together with policymakers in Indonesia. And what, uh, what are we going to say uh, today in relation specifically to the project is really a real token because we are in the process of pulling together all this material that we collected for the first phase, which was, as I said, much smaller, and to put that in a, in a broader context. Uh, and I'll say a few more words about that. Um, Indonesia is really in a crossroads and from the point of view of energy. Uh, the country stopped being an oil uh, exporter in 2004, and by 2005, as you can see here, was already a major importer. And this is increasing. So this situation uh, is prompting uh, a number of, of uh, changes, and there is now a new policy for renewable energy in the country, uh, where bioenergy is uh, a part. 
Uh, one might think that a country with so many opportunities, so much potential for bioenergy would, be, ha would have reached uh, further. But of course we don't have to, to look very much to see that this is still the case in many places where people have not yet completely understood the potential of bioenergy. Wherever you are, even in a place where you have uh, a land constraints, you actually have a lot of bioenergy potential. Uh, and also, uh, uh, we have to remember that uh, development is not linear, and we can see that uh, although uh, you know Indonesia has been producing sugarcane since the 17th century, uh, it is uh, actually losing ground, and it's today an importer of sugar, a country that has had very very high yields by, by any standards of comparison in the world, uh, while other countries that are looking into the sector have actually uh, is, are, also, uh, are increasing their yields, as you can see here for the case of, of Thailand, also a major sugar producer. Uh, when approaching uh, Indonesia, mm -hmm. it is uh, uh, very important to understand that uh, Indonesia uh, is very, very diverse in, in many different ways and geographically very special because it's a country with many islands. Uh, and uh, not only that it's uh, geographically uh, located in, in, in different islands, but these islands can be quite different with very different uh, traditions, uh, uh, cultural traditions. If you have visited Bali, you can hardly pretend you know Indonesia because Bali is, has a Hindu tradition, for example, while Java would have a, a Muslim tradition. So they are very, very different to these places. And also the distribution of the bioenergy potential is very different. As you can see here in Java, we have uh, uh, most of the, of the potential, uh, the, the production today. Uh, but also we see that in the structure, the mills in, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Java, they are state-owned, while the new industry is actually being established elsewhere, for example, in Sumatra. And uh, this is uh, also very important because it, the, the, the context in which this is evolving is, is very different. And when one would speak of national policy in Indonesia, one needs to know that uh, the, these, these local governments are very, very strong. So the national government has a very, very big challenge in terms of actually bringing together the different interests of these different uh, uh, and diverse uh, um, uh, areas of the country into a common strategy. This is uh, really a, a barrier to be taken care of. And when we approached also this, uh, we have to understand that uh, we know of the uh, challenges that, and we have, most of us have heard about the palm oil expansion in, in Indonesia that has been very criticized. Uh, but our strategy from the beginning was actually to approach the issue of sugarcane ethanol uh, from the point of view of both actually recuperating and in enhancing the potential for sugar production because the country today is in imported as having been an exported before, but also uh, if, while doing this, combining the opportunities of, of uh, creating a different type of industry. And this is, uh, I think, what is, needs to be understood when you talk about land. is not land in a linear uh, point of view. It's not the land availability in the way things are established today. Or the use of the resources is, is, uh, today. Uh, you, don't use, you, you, you don't use the land for either food or for energy. You actually do both. And this is just one sketch to show that the, the, in a bio -ref refinery, you would have multiple uh, um, benefits, including, of course, the provision of electricity, which is so important. So the, the, the approach to bioenergy needs to be an approach that builds upon a combination of approaches. In, if we look in the past, and, and most of you have worked with development, that has either people choose a societal approach or a market approach or a technological approach. And now we have also added up to that the, the scientific approach, because climate has it requires very much a scientific approach. No, talk about adaptation, for example. It, it's a lot of knowledge that needs to be built up. And again, this uh, on the adaptation, if we, we have looked at the opportunity of linking what is in place, enhancing it, and then adding new technology and new knowledge so that you actually can have a multiplication of, of the benefits and not only actually a linear expansion, 
which is in the bottom of the criticism that often the land use issue uh, actually uh, the, um, is, is, is at the bottom of where the criticism is. So I'll stay there and hopefully we have time for some yes. stuff. Yeah, we'll